Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. We greet you in the only name worth mentioning, and that is the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time uh, and for the purpose of praise, worship, and magnifying the name of the Lord. We give God praise because we understand that it was nobody but God that brought us through another week. Amen. The word of the Lord teaches us, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Truly, God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Those of you who are coming in into this space and uh, this place and space, we thank you for again tuning in another week as we continue to still bring forth the message but just using a different method. We thank God for technology and the ability of still being able to reach uh, the masses. Amen. So we're grateful just for the opportunity to still be able to do what God has called, commissioned, and commanded us to do as we continue to press our way through these uncharted territories and times. We're not going to belabor the hour. We're going to be favored with a selection from Sister Angel, and then we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen.
Shall we look to the Lord? Father, we love you today and we thank you for this day. Truly, God, this is the day that you have made and your word declares that we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you again for allowing us to wake up and show up in this your house uh, to preach and to declare your word. We pray now, O oh God, that you would take me out of self, wrap me up, tie me up, and tangle me up in your spirit, Lord, that what I should say would be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, do allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, for you are my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. But most of all, God, I thank you for being my very best friend, and the people of God would declare amen. 1 Kings chapter 21, 1 Kings chapter 21, I want to read four verses in your hearing, reading from the New King James Version of God's Word, 1 Kings the 21st chapter, and I want to begin reading at verse number 1 and commence reading at verse number 4. Again, 1 Kings 21, verses 1 through 4, according to the New King James Version of the Bible. There you should find these words recorded. 1 Kings 21, verse 1, and the word of the Lord reads, And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, next to the place of Ahab, the king of Samaria, so Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near, next to my house, and for it I will give you a vineyard better than it, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. And so Ahab went into his house sullen and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away his face and would not eat. Thus, I want to end the reading of God's word. Just for a little bit, I want to preach today as the Lord will lead from the fault. No deal. No deal. My brothers and sisters, this particular text comes to us uh, dealing with a conversation and the potential exchange of property. However, I would that you would take your mind and um, erase the idea of property for the purpose of preaching this morning and insert um, your spirit or your soul. King Ahab wants to acquire this property that has been left as an inheritance to, uh, to Naboth. Just like the king wants to inherit or acquire property, I deduce to us this morning that the devil wants to acquire your soul. Years ago, there was a game show that came on TV entitled Deal or No Deal. And often the contestants of the show would turn a good deal or a good offer, turn down a good deal or a good offer and leave with less than what they had came with. And other times they uh, would make a good deal and leave with more than they expected to receive. But either way, it was a gamble based upon the deal that they made. And one would ask the question, should they take what they have and go on their way, or should they hold out to get more? As one would say, deal or no deal, win or lose. At the end of the day, deal or no deal is just a game show. And any money or anything that they would win, and acquire.
part, it will soon be spent, and any humiliation that they may have endured while going through the process will soon be forgotten. But my brothers and sisters, I want to submit to us that in our daily living, we, we too face a, a deal or no deal type of choice that could affect us for the rest of our lives and for all of eternity. The, the choices that we make every day may seem trivial on the surface. However, one wrong decision would change the very course of the way we live our life. Yes, it would change our lives in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. But I want to deduce to you, submit to you today that our spiritual decisions are far more important than any tangible decisions that we make on this earth. We'll, we have to consider the fact, will we as spiritual believers, will we make a deal with the enemy and sell our soul or will we live for Jesus the Christ? Will we live the life that God sent his son to die for? Will we live a life that we can be and live a life in such a way that we can be an example to others? Will, will we be as the Bible calls us a bright light in a dark valley trying to lead someone to salvation. My brothers and sisters here in our text today we are introduced to a man named Nabal. He was faced with a deal or no deal type of situation. And when you look at the, uh, second, First Kings chapter 21, you begin to look at the life of this king and look at the life of this vineyard owner and you have to figure out why is it truly that Nabal wants to hold on to this real estate? Is it really just because it's the inheritance that his family that his father left him which leads me to a question why do you really want to hold on to your soul? Would you rather give your soul away for a good time uh, that the enemy will be able to destroy your soul destroy your life destroy your reputation and then you have nothing to live for what are you willing to hold on to and are you willing to tell the enemy no deal let me give you a little history from the text three years have passed now since the situation that happened at Mount Carmel during those three years the people of Israel the Bible says have been defeated by the Syrian army which resulted in a time of peace and prosperity. I deduce that along with that peace and prosperity, Baal worship had taken its high place in the people's affections. And despite the slaughter of the prophets of Baal at the top of Mount Carmel, it is still true that Ahab was still the king. Yes, it's true that the wicked, his wicked wife Jezebel, y'all remember her? And Ahab were king. Jezebel was still his wife. Baal worship was still trying to get a hold of the nation. But now we have moved three years down the road. Ahab is now at his summer retreat with his wife Jezebel in the place called Jezreel. He's come to the palace a few days for some rest and relaxation. And while one day Ahab is walking, looking, and thinking, that next door to his vineyard, nestled right up against it, is a vineyard that was owned by the by a man named Nabal. Nabal, the Bible says, was a good and godly man, one who worshipped the Lord, followed the law of his God, was one uh, of the 7,000 who did not bow the knee at Baal. It happened that he owned the vineyard next to the summer palace of the wicked king Ahab. We may assume that up until this day there had never been any trouble between these two. As far as we know, Ahab really paid no attention. Nabal had done everything and whatever he needed to do to stay out of the way of the wicked king. Let me pause parenthetically and suggest no matter how hard you try to stay out of the way of the devil, you may not be paying attention to the devil, but I assure you that the devil is paying attention to you. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible teaches me that he walks up and down to and fro seeking whom he may devour. You need to understand that when you are paying him no 
attention. You have something that the devil wants. The devil is not mad as long as you're out here in the street sucking and jiving. The devil is not mad as long as you're questioning God. The devil is not mad as long as you're not handling and attending to your business. But just as soon as you make up your mind to follow Christ, just as soon as you make up your mind uh, to seek the face of the Lord just uh, as soon as you try to live uh, the, very, the very best you can uh, here comes the wicked king uh, trying to acquire that which God has given you trying uh, to acquire that which you had to fast over that which you had to stay up all night long over here comes the devil trying uh, to make a deal for your soul this leads me to the first observation of the text. That is, when you make up in your mind to tell the devil no deal, uh, that is a certain obligation uh, that you have. Uh, the Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that Nabal, the, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to uh, the palace uh, of Ahab, king of Samaria. Uh, this vineyard had been passed down uh, from generation. It had been in the family since Israel had been given possession of the promised land. The land uh, had been in his family for generations, uh, and it was more than just his more than just his inheritance, it was his heritage. It was prime real estate, if you will. And somewhere along the way, King, the king of Israel, built a palace next door in an elite neighborhood, if you will. Nobody had better possessions than this man neighbor. You know how it is. When you get something that looks better than what somebody else has. Jealousy begins to set in. The Bible says that Nabal had worked his vineyard, raised grapes to provide living for his family, done a good job maintaining his vineyard. Can I pause here and let you know that when you work good to preserve your soul, when you work good to be the very best that you can be for the Lord, there's always an enemy trying to take from you that which the Lord has given you. What are you saying, Pastor Gray? The very day that you lifted your hand and your heart toward heaven and you gave the Lord your life and you began, you began to live for the Lord. The enemy got mad at you and the enemy started trying to figure out how it is that he could acquire such a soul that you have. But you got to make up in your mind that I'm making no deal with the devil. I'm not going to sell my soul for a cheap thrill. I'm not going to sell my soul for a good time, but we got to learn how to take advantage of the grace and mercy that the Lord has given us. we got to take advantage of the peace and the long suffering that the Lord has given us. we got to thank God that we've got the kind of soul that is sold out not for a cheap thrill, but we got the kind of soul that's sold out that we live for the Lord. The Bible says that Nahab had tilled and worked the land. He knew that he was just a caretaker. And I need somebody to understand that you're just a caretaker for your soul. But like the Bible said, Peter said, beware that the enemy is walking up and down seeking whom he may devour. And I come to let somebody know this morning that as a child of God, you have an obligation to let the devil know I'm not making a deal with you. You have an obligation to remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. You have an obligation to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all shall be added unto you. You have an obligation to stay committed to your great shepherd. You have an obligation to look the devil in his face and declare you can make whatever deal you want. You can offer whatever amount of money you want. But as good as God has been to me, I can't afford to make a deal with the devil. 
Not only, not only does the text teach me that Naboth had an obligation, but not only did he have an obligation, the Bible says he was presented with an opportunity. Verse number two, so Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, listen, give me your vineyard that I may have it for a vegetable garden because it is near my house. As Naboth is working in the vineyard, Ahab comes uh, from over the way to offer him an opportunity. He wants to buy the vineyard. Let us uh, walk through the king's offer, if you will. Uh, he gave him a royal opportunity uh, that came from the great king. Can I let you know that the enemy will come through and try to present you with an opportunity? Ahab wanted the vineyard because it was close to his house. He wanted to plant his own garden there. It was close by. He could walk the grounds himself. He could get it would give him pleasure to look out and see another piece of property that he had acquired. Can I let somebody know that just is trying uh, to make an opportunity uh, to acquire this property uh, that the enemy is trying to present us uh, with an opportunity uh, to acquire our soul. Uh, but I don't know how y'all feel about it, uh, but I heard the songwriter say, I'm sold out uh, for the Lord. Uh, and I wonder, is there anybody here uh, who can have, uh, uh, who can adapt a naval spirit uh, and declare like naval declare? King Ahab, but I cannot give you my property, and I cannot sell you my property. Is there anybody here who can declare that I'm sorry, devil? Yes, I'm going through a pandemic right now, but I still won't sell my soul. Yes, I may not have a whole lot of money right now, but I still will not sell my soul. I'm sold out. Hey! <laughs> 
but I've come too far to turn around. The Lord has been too good to me. The Lord has blessed me over and over and over again. And so I would rather hang on to what I got than to risk losing everything that it took to get me to where I am. Because the truth of the matter is the devil just wants what's yours so that he can brag about all that he has acquired. The sad part about this, this text is if you keep reading you'll come to find out that when Ahab was turned down by the Bible says he went in the house, got in the bed, refused to eat. His wife with her Jezebel spirit asked him, baby, what's wrong with you? Why won't you eat? Why are you so downtrodden? Why are you so sullen? Why? Well, it looks like you're giving up. Ahab told his wife, because they have over the label over there won't sell me his property. She told her husband, don't you worry about it. Ted says she went out and made a decree in the name of her husband. Long story short, Naboth was stoned to death. Went back in the house and told Ahab, listen, that piece of property that you wanted, you can have it now. Because Naboth is dead. Let me tell you something. The enemy will not give up. He's going to keep on approaching you. He's going to keep on working at you until you eventually have to let him know, listen, the Lord, the Lord has said, this that I have. Can I say it like the songwriter said, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world cannot take it away. Let me tell you something, even though they were going back and forth over a piece of property, in my spiritual eye, I see this debate between saint and sinner. The saint is trying to hold on to what the Lord has Give it him. But the self is trying to acquire what the saint has. Can I help somebody today let you know you got something that the enemy wants? But the Lord told me to tell you don't make a deal with the devil. Because if you make a deal with the enemy, you will lose more. Not only will you lose what you give over, but then you remove yourself out of the hand of God. What are you saying? Pastor, go over to Romans chapter 1, I believe it is. Where Paul says, after a certain time, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate means the Lord takes his hands off of you, leaves you to yourself. I want to encourage you that do not listen to the wicked king. The king told Naboth, listen man, either you can give it to me or I'll buy it from you. Give me what you got, I'll give you a piece better. I do said, what you have, the Lord has given it to you. And what the Lord gives, nobody can give you nothing better. He gave you joy. He gave peace. He gave you life. He gave you grace. He gave you mercy. He gave you a right mind. He gave you good health. He gave you a stable body. Whatever the Lord has given, don't sell it out for something that the enemy is trying to acquire. Look at your enemy in the face and tell your enemy, no deal. You may go try to get somebody else, but the Lord has brought me too far been too good and kept me too long for me to give over 
to you that which the Lord has blessed unto me. I understand that when the Lord has given you something, you have an obligation to hold on to it. The enemy may make great opportunities, but you have an obligation. And on top of your obligation, you've got an obedience to serve the will of God. As good as God has been to you, I can't afford not to give him praise and to keep what God has given. He's given me his word. His word lets me know that no enemy, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. His word lets me know that no matter what I'm going through, the Lord said he'll never leave me, he'll never forsake me. Devil, you can't have my joy. You can't have my peace of mind. You can't have my grace. You can't have my mercy. You can't have my long suffering. You can't have this peace that surpasses all understanding. God bless you. God keep you in the heaven and make his face shine upon you is our prayer. Father, we thank you now for that which our eyes have seen. We thank you for that which our ears have heard. We thank you for that which our spirits have felt. Thank you for allowing us just to show up for these few moments just to make an effort to encourage some soul today. God, if there's someone who is listening to this message now, does not know you in the free part of their sin. I pray now, O oh Lord, that they would cry out, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? I pray, God, that you would speak to their spirit, arrest their soul, bring them to the altar of repentance where they can call on your name. And when they call upon your name, your word says they shall be saved. If there are any sick among us now, God, we pray that your healing hand would be upon them pray that you would move by your spirit, touch like only you can touch, help like only you can help, heal like only you can heal, save and deliver like only you can. Bless us now. Bless our going out. Bless our coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory just for who you are. It is in Jesus' name we pray. of uh, your week was well and I pray that as we close out this week and walk into another week that the blessings of the Lord will rest strongly upon you as we all continue to wonder what tomorrow will bring we may wonder but we still trust in God knowing that tomorrow is in his hand God bless you God keep you do not forget those of you that can and will will send your gifts to uh, the house of the Lord via mail or via uh, online giving. Um, if you have prayer requests, please make those requests known by in the comment section or by sending an email that we can pray with you and for you um, that the Lord will meet you in the place that you need. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven make his face shine upon you.